So what is the hierarchy of control measures then? As you can see on the screen, the hierarchy of control measures is just a simple process model that helps us go through the decision making process from top to bottom, looking at first of all the most effective control measure options at the top, right down to the bottom where we have the least effective options. At the top you can see that elimination is the most effective option in all cases, right down to the bottom where we see that PPE, otherwise known as personal protective equipment, is the least desirable option. Let's look at all these options in more detail. The first and most effective option on the hierarchy of control measures is that of elimination. What do we mean by elimination? Well, you might have guessed already that it's just removing the hazard entirely. So we're completely removing the risk from whichever scenario we're looking at. This is a great option, but sometimes it's not easy. If we think back to the example of the forklift potentially colliding with a pedestrian in our warehouse environment, what would eliminating the hazard look like in this scenario? Well, we could do it one of two ways. We could either remove the forklift itself, so stop all forklift operations in the warehouse. And that would remove the potential for a collision with the pedestrian, of course. But as you can imagine, this wouldn't be easy because the forklift is integral and really important in that environment. It might be easier to think about removing the pedestrian from that environment. So not allowing the pedestrians to access the zones where the forklifts are operating. And that as well would be eliminating the hazard or the potential for collision with the forklift. Of course, in many scenarios, neither of these options are going to be possible. And that's why we move further down at that stage to the next level in the hierarchy of control measures. And if that was the case, we move on to look at substitution. Whereas elimination is about removing the hazard, substitution is about reducing the hazard. So we're not really changing everything about what we're doing, but we might be changing a product, a material or a process to reduce the level of risk. For example, if we were normally performing lighting maintenance duties in an office environment using an A-frame step ladder. We could, for example, substitute that step ladder to use a safety platform or a mobile scaffold that provided additional fall restraint and stabilization to avoid toppling over and, of course, a fall from height. This would be a good example of substitution. One thing you have to be careful of when you're using substitution as a means of controlling risk is to ensure that you go through a process of thinking whether or not you're introducing any new hazards into the process or activity that you're making a significant change to. If you've found that there are no feasible substitution options, it's time to move to the next level on the hierarchy of control measures, and that is to consider engineering controls. The next option on our hierarchy of controls isn't eliminating or substituting the hazard, but isolating people from the hazard. And we do that through the introduction of engineering controls. Engineering controls are widespread throughout workplace environments. For example, if we're thinking about electrical risk, we often see interlock devices being used to prevent the risk of electrical shock or electrocution. If we think about grinding or cutting devices, you often see physical guards in place to prevent that physical contact between users and the equipment itself. When it comes to respiratory protection, you might see the use of local exhaust ventilation systems, for example, or fume hoods used to extract the harmful contaminants out of the area that the worker is in. 